was a ragtag group of maverick scientists who have been challenging the system for a long time and oftentimes spinning our wheels and being persecuted for challenging that system. Have you felt supported in your work where you work? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, I won't go into all of that, though. <laughs> You've had colleagues trying to get you pulled from the university for even wanting to study adaptive multipaddock grazing. Why? If they've built a reputation, they don't want somebody breaking it down and telling them that everything they've done is wrong. And yet, when you go back to the basic tenets of science, no matter what your hypothesis or paradigm, you should always be looking for, not just open to, you should be looking for deviations from that hypothesis. It's a team that, in a typical university setting, would never all come to the table together. And we're all making, and have made, a number of personal sacrifices. No question. Including putting our professional reputations on the line. Every one of us has done that. Every one of us. Every one of us. You've got to have respect for that. Suddenly we had this group of like-minded folks that were working on so many different aspects of the system. And Peter managed to knit that together into a really compelling project that I think is probably going to be one of the most important research efforts in agroecology in the last 50 to 100 years. Our research had one main goal, to measure how nature worked on grazing lands. It's called system science. It's about carbon in the soil for sure, we also wanted to measure the diversity of soil microbes and bugs and plants and birds, the amount of methane from the cows and their health, and how well the farmers were doing. The basic structure of our experiment is to find amp grazers that have been doing a good job, achieving good outcomes, and compare them with people who are using the... Continuous grazing. Continuous grazing with a bit of fertilizers and, and chopping hay periodically. So we're gonna study five pairs of farms in the southeast US, and we're gonna do all the same science on both sides of the fence. And we're gonna see what's the difference between an amp grazed field and a conventionally grazed field. 